Okay, let's uh, start the lecture. Uh, we're we're going to talk about bearing selection today. Okay, and uh, then we'll talk about uh, uh, the different scenario, basically saying variable loading. All right. Uh, first, uh, let's talk about bearing selection. In the previous lecture, we derived or uh, presented uh, in an equation. Basically, it's a bearing. It's a load like equation. And that equation, there are two different formalities of writing that equation. One way is uh, you calculate the life okay, based on the selected bearing. Stating is the bearing basic dynamic load. Kr is the uh, uh, reliability. K is the loading factor. And Fe is the equivalent uh, loading. Okay, so uh, basically, the Fe will be uh, a different under different scenario, right? And the other way of uh, deriving or using this equation is uh, you calculate the so-called state time required, and uh, so basically that's the state time that you are looking for, okay, for based on certain um, life requirement and also uh, the loading specific loading condition. Okay, so. This is a different way of right, calculating, of making use of this equation over right here. So same equation, just uh, write it uh, in a different uh, reaction here, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's look at uh, basically two different cases. And the first case, as we said, we select bearing when the bearing is used only to take radial load. So uh, there's radial load only. So it's radio load only. How do we uh, select the bearing here? So we're, we're going to use an example here to uh, uh, to illustrate this idea here. Okay. Uh, if it's a radio load only, just remember that F E will equal V times R, right? And V is one for inner ring. And this is 1.2 for outer ring. Let's make sure 1.2 and 1.2 yeah, for outer ring. Okay. So let's see. In this is in this following example is this. You have a shaft. Then the shaft is supported by okay, two bearings. So let's say this is my y axis, this is the x axis. Okay? So if I look at from the side view over right here and the bearing okay, is over here. Okay. So you have a number of balls in it. And this is the loading condition for the shaft right here. This is your RY. This is your RX. Then overall, it's the R, the resulting load R you're looking at. So it's the two-plane loading, right? Generally, that's very common. So we calculate the R here, okay? Yeah. So here's a certain, uh, certain known conditions. Suppose that we have the giving the shaft diameter. So shaft diameter minimum. Is two centimeters. Okay. And the R Y R X, let's just say that we have already calculated and we know what they are. So there are two ends, right? There's the left side, there's this right side. So let's do how we use R for the right side, I use L for the left side. So for the right side, the Y direction is five Five seven point eight. It really doesn't matter. And the R R X on the right side. Uh, what was it? Three two six point seven. And R L Y is. 
RLX 40.5 negative 40.5 Newton. So the negative basically means uh, it's pointing to the different direction of the uh, coordinate system. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here is uh, the uh, given condition that is here. Then our desired life. Capital N is meaning cycles. Okay, it's desired life right here. So let's say suppose that we're designing for a reliability of uh, uh, ninety percent. Basically, uh, the reliability factor KR will be just one, right? Okay. Okay, and uh, assuming loading condition is uh, a perfect condition, okay, and so the KR, the KA will be taken off as one. Okay, so in this case, okay, let's say how do we select a proper bearing? So what do we do? We have uh, two directions that are here, right? Two, uh, we have two sides that are here. So for the right side, so first let's calculate the resulting force for the left, uh, for the right side. Let's call it R R. Okay. So that is equal to the square root of the uh, addition of the square of these two right here. Okay. Oh, sorry. My graph is this is one side and this is one side. Right? This is one side. So R R X like this. Okay. So the square root, the square of this plus the square of this, and then takes the square root. Uh, you end up with 646.4 newton. And for the left side, your R L So this square plus this square, taking square root, and that's 659.9 newton. Need. So the left side is slightly bigger than the right side, and uh, if this is the case, then when we do, when we select bearing, let's just suppose that we want to select bearing the same bearing for the both sides of the shaft, right? So we basically we, we we're gonna select the bearing based on the left side of loading here, okay? Yeah. So we pick this as our uh, loading here. So essentially, this number, right? This number is which one? Is this F E at here? Okay, it's an inner ring rotation, so V is one. So this is going to be our equivalent load F E for the calculation. Okay, so F E equal to the R F is nine point nine newton. Okay, so once we have this right now, and let's calculate right based on this one here, it gives you the desired life. And we want to select bearing. So basically, we want to select a bearing whose uh, the required shaping required needs to be greater than the C required. So let's basically calculate the C required, which is the formula over here, right? And that's F E and L one over A. Let me check. Yeah. So what's the L then? The L right here is your desired life over 10 to the power of 6, right? 10 to the power of 6, okay? Yeah. And the A of 3 is the ball bearing, so A is 3. But now you have all the numbers that are here. So plug in the numbers, 669.9 times 100, 1 over 3. Uh, that is the required. Do you do the calculation, which turned out to be uh, 699.5 pound force? So yeah, I basically actually I shouldn't see pound force. I think I converted. I converted everything. You know what? No, I think I made a mistake. So instead of using Newton here, I converted to, to pound force because. The uh, catalog I use giving is uh, C10 required is in pound force. Okay, 
So I did a little conversion in here. So this number is here. The 600, 690 is approximately under 50.6 pound force. Okay. So I use that number for the calculation. Okay. So here's my state required here. Okay, C is required. And so the next step is to take a bearing such that to satisfy the C required. Not just to satisfy the C required, but also the bearing full size, right? has to satisfy the minimum shaft diameter requirement, which is 2 centimeter or 20 millimeter here, right? So, well, we, I, I used a catalog uh, from NSK out of here. Uh, six spheres, we're picking ball bearing. So let's see, I've decided to use uh, 63 series, okay, 63 series. If, I'm, if, uh, if the ball size is, uh, the shaft diameter is 2 centimeters, which is 20 millimeter. So basically, 20 millimeter is right here, right? It's right here. Okay? Yeah. So let me just load it up over here. Okay. So that's 20 meter. 20 millimeter, and the number of the bearing is 6304. Okay? So let's say, this is a basic plate. Take the bearing based on the shaft requirement. Then you go to the next page. Okay. And there are two columns that are here. This column here, this column here is the, uh, the basic dynamic loading here. Okay, basic dynamic loading. This column here is a static, basic static loading rating. Okay, so basically this is considering when the bearing is moving and this is when it's a uh, static situation. So uh, we are looking for is a C10 value. So let's look at 604, which is what? 3580 pound force. And our required is actually just uh, nearly 700 pound force, right? So basically, this guy is definitely enough for this uh, application out of here. Make sense? Yeah. So that's 6304. Now, sometimes you might think is, well, uh, this number seems to be a little too big for the required loading here, right? So maybe I don't need to pick the 63 series. So we can do what? We can go to 62 series. So 50, what's the difference between 63 series and 62 series? But the first one you made, you look at 6204, that's the same ball size. And the basic dynamic loading is 2880, that's below, lower than the 63 series now, right? Yeah. But they have the same ball size though. The difference, of course, between 63 and 62 is uh, the dimension series, basically the outer diameter is different. And also the width will be also different. Okay? The width will also be different. So that's um, that's what you need to take, uh, uh, when you design, you need to take into consideration. If you lower yourself again to 60, they don't have a 61, but if you lo look at the 60, 60 here, and it says this number is still okay, right? Still okay. So from the cost point of view, uh, you probably actually just, you can use 6004 at here. Is that clear? Yeah. So that's basically uh, the picking of this uh, um, ball bearings. This for the situation when it's a purely a radio load here. So I'll just write it here from NS crew. Now this catalog is a it's, it's a version of the 2007 or something like that. Uh, if you go to the NS Kick website to download the new new ball bearing catalog. Uh, they actually have, I look at it, the numbers of the latest one has higher, for the same number, they have a higher basic dynamic loading in here. So I think uh, manufacturing uh, technique or other things basically uh, have a, a better loading capacity now. Okay, so coming back here. So from NS2, we can pay. 6304 or 6204 or 6004. Okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, the other thing I want to mention about the catalog here is, uh, if you look at the catalog, look at the diagram in here. So in general, every manufacturer will indicate this one here. They also indicate is the radius, okay, this portion here, the radius of this uh, uh, fillet at the uh, at the corners. Okay. Yeah. They also give you the suggested DA, a small DA and a capital DA. Okay. So those numbers are good when you do your car modeling or when you uh, when you design your step shaft. Okay. So that basically gives you suggested what should be the height of the step shaft that is here with the girl and the shoulder. That good? No. Alright, so the, this this D A D A here, they are they are in the cal uh where are they? They are here, right? They are here. Okay, they're here. Yeah. So generally a different catalog has a different ways of different names, and but they should list these numbers at here. So that's the Phillips radius. Okay. Yeah. So that's a simple example, okay, illustrating how you pick okay, uh, the solder for radio load only. Yeah. Uh, two is the loading condition, right? And the loading factor, uh, 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 not FR. See, this is a KR, right? This is KR. Two points. Yeah. KR is a reliability factor. So, uh, we're designing for 90% 90, 90 of uh, reliability in this example here. So, this value, this value just one, right? Yeah, because let's assume uh, loading condition is good. In the previous lecture, we, we have two tables. Right? One is for the suggested TA, the, the other one is TR. Now, by the way, this is what we call the SKF life equation, right? And then the, actually this one, SKF life equation. In the textbook, there's another one derived from VD uh, distribution formula, but um, I think I suggested is that we can use this one to simplify the situation, the calculation, okay, when you do the divide. Okay, so that's case number one, then case number two, so let's look at design for combined loading. Uh, yeah. So essentially, the bearing will be subjected to both axial and radial load. So bearing selection under combined loading. Okay. Okay. So let's see how do we deal with this situation here. This is a little bit of tricky situation than the first case. So this is the case if you're designing helical gear and then you have to uh, select your bearing by going through the procedures I listed under this case. Okay. So first of all, let's look at what we mean by combined loading. If this is the shaft and you have the bearing on here. Okay. So the shaft is probably subjected to and actual loading and a radial load, okay, and a radial load. So technically speaking, the combined load is in this direction right here. Okay, so it's a certain angle, right? Okay. However, okay, uh, what we what we want what we do the next is we we actually want to do what we want to do is we want to derive a model, okay. So this model is based on this combined loading. And we look at the model we derive it is we don't look at the combined loading. We only look at one radial load only, F E. But idea is the model with the radial load F E only supposed to cause the same kind of damage as the model 
with the combined loading. So that's the idea right here, right? So in other words, we want to find out an FE at right here, such that this FE, which is a radio load only, will cause the same kind of a damage as the combined loading. Okay, so that's the idea. So FE is the equivalent to load. And it's all producing the same damage as FR and FA. Okay, as FR and FA. So the whole question is how do we obtain this FE? Because once we know the F then we can substitute this Fe back into this equation that is here to calculate what we want, right? And we want. So here's the formula for calculating Fe. It's actually an empirical equation that is here. Plus Y I F A. Explain. Each one of them. Okay. I'm going to calculate F B. But uh, first of all, uh, F R and F A they are basically the radio load and the axial load. Okay. The capital V over here. That's the same V as we indicated before. Uh, if uh, if the inner ring rotation is one, if the outer ring rotation is one point two. Okay. So the V is the same thing. So the focal point, focus point is on the x i and y i. Okay. Explain what they are and how do we obtain uh, this guy here? X i is called the radial load factor. And y i is called axial load factor. Okay. Yeah. Now there is a subscript i at it here. Uh, the i takes only two values, one and a two. I'll show you where, where they're found. They're from the from a table. Uh, i will be one. So you take the i as one. When the ratio between f a and the v f r is less than Okay. What E is, and I will take two when this ratio F A over V F I is greater than E. Okay. Greater than e. So let me show you what E is. Okay. So I need to bring in a table. Just in one second. So this table is added here. This is a table 11-1 from our textbook. Okay. So let's take a look at this table right here, okay? So this table, first column, well, I'll explain it maybe the first column later. So the rest of the column of the E here. So the E is a factor. Then there are two bigger column here, the one column is associated with the ratio F A is less than E, and the other one is the uh, associated with the data F A over V F R greater than E. Okay? Yeah. So then if this guy is less than E, your X your I is one and uh, look at that X one Y one got it. So basically X one is always one. Y one is always zero. Right? Only zero. Then, if I plug it back into this equation for calculating the equivalent load, x1 is always 1. 
and the y1 is always 0. So basically, what do I get? f is e equal to vfr, right? f is basically equal to vfr. f is equal to vfr. The fa, what happened? It's gone, right? It's gone. So which means what? What f a? f a is the absolute. This one is this. The f a is actually negligible. Okay? So you're only considering as a video load. Okay? So that's basically the situation under here. Okay? Over here. So for this one here, the f a is But under this one here is not. So at a here you will have to take the F A into consideration for the calculation. However, X2 value, right, is a constant. It's 0.56. Okay, so this is 0.56 here. But the Y2 is a certain different values. Alright? Yeah. So technically speaking, the X2 and X and Y value here. It depends on the geometry of the brain and number of the balls like this. But however, okay, what does the y2 value depend on? So y2 value ultimately depends on what? Depends on the certain p values. Okay. Now how about the p value? And p value actually depends on this So the e is a function of this f a over c naught. Right? E is a function of this. So what is a c naught? f a is the axial load and c naught is the basic static load rating. And this is basically the value from the catalog. Remember that one of the column I showed you right here. This column here. Okay, this column. This is a C naught. Okay, this is a C naught here. So different bearings have a different C naught. A different C naught. So in other words, if we go back here, how do I get the number out of here. I, ha I can only get the number when the bearing is selected. That make sense? However, what are we doing here? We're selecting bearing. We don't know the bearing yet, right? So basically, this process here, it's, it's not a determinant process right away you can get what you want. It's going to be uh, maybe a couple of steps of iteration set it here. All right? Yeah. So, just bear in mind of where this is from, though. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so, now the question is, okay, how do we select the brain and uh, what, what process shall we take? Now, this is the basic, this table is our foundation. Okay? Everything that we do here will be basically based on this table right here. Okay? So, We'll use this table, 11 1, okay, for bearing selection. Now, let's say uh, you have the table over here, okay? okay? You have the table here. I want you to think, okay? Just, just think, of it, think, of, think, uh, think, of, think about it loud here. You know, what, what can you do? You know, what, what, what do you think you can make? What, what can you do to uh, to select a bearing just based on this table here? You're selecting bearing, meaning uh, you have the uh, you have the F A F R, and you have the desired life. Let's say, right? And you're selecting basically. You wanted to calculate. You want to select bearing. And uh so value should be higher than the required 
actually require it out of here, right? Now, so you still have this, the idea out of here. But what can you do then, right? Where shall we start, basically, the question is. Can you think of a one idea to hear that? As I said, this table, the data, well, the data of here, in order to get the data, or in order to make use of the table, you have to have a certain bearing information, right? But however, we don't have the bearing yet. So, let's see if I need to calculate C required. If I need to calculate C required, what do I need to know? I need to obtain this FE out of here. Right? If I need FE, what, do I, what else do I need? FE is over here. And I need what? I need XI and YI. And XI, I don't think I need to worry. XI is this value, right? But this is another, another problem. Well, how do I know whether I'm going to be here or here, right? But let's say if you're, you, you decided this is greater than that, then your X2 is constant. But a Y2 is not. So if you need to calculate the FE, which means Somehow you have to start from a value of what? Yi, right? So now you look at this one here. Where should I start? There's a whole bunch of yi here. Should I start from 2.3 or start from 1 or should I start from anywhere between here, right? So that's the point. As a matter of fact, you can start anywhere you want. Okay, you, can, you can start basically y2 with any values you want here. Okay. But if you start any, any values you want, that's what we call the trying and error. Okay. Or, if, if you're, you're kind of a conservative guy, you say, okay, let's just take the middle one. Right? That's okay. Okay? So, what I just described is, you, you start with a starting point, is to calculate FE based on Y I value. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. Right? Your starting point is to calculate FE based on a certain Y I value that you choose. This approach out of here, it's, it's basically what? You start you assuming that you don't know the bearing. And you're going to calculate. And based on the calculation, then you go ahead and you pick a bearing. Is that right? Yeah. However, there are other ways of doing it, right? And you do something else. Instead of starting from the table, what else can you do? So basically, the starting point. What if my starting point is not to tap to S E? Where else could be your starting point? Anybody? So the starting point is not FE. What do you know? Basically, let the question give you the minimum shaft diameter. Then, can you start by choosing the bearing, right? So, the second point is, maybe my starting point was 
a bearing okay based on shaft diameter okay based on shaft diameter the reason be basically you look at the two different starting points is either way right you you have to start the process basically so that you can go into this table and start to make decisions okay so I'll show you uh, what do I mean by the two different starting points so let's look at the I wanted to calculate the FE based on certain y i x. So I suppose that I'm going to select the single line deep through the other. At one one five zero RPM. Desire line. Twenty thousand hours. Okay. So those are basically the given numbers that are here. Now KA basically set it to 1 for reliability of 90% and also let's use the TR as a to minimize to simplify it just a little bit ok so let's see what do we how do we uh, proceed from here right yeah. let's go over the first case starting point right? Is to calculate the FE based on a certain Y I value. Okay. Starting point is Y I. So what do I do? Here's what I I can do it here. Uh, you can do two different ways. One way is to assume Y I's middle point 1.55 or 1.4 1 1.63. Okay, either one is okay. So I'll just first assume this one. Uh, you know what? It's 1.55, right? So basically, you don't really need to take the 1.55. Okay. Let's just simply take a value around that. Uh, if I tell you, I'll just take 1.50, and that's okay. So that's sort of a middle ground of over there. Now, you, you also can do this. You can also do for this step here, uh, calculate this F, okay, calculate this one here. Look at this table, you look at this one. Calculate this FA over VFR, okay? So, or you do this. Calculate this FA over VFR. And V is 1 in this case. FA is this number, FR is that. So that's approximately 0 0.36. Okay, 0 0.36. Then you can come here. 0 0.36. So set the E value just temporarily. Okay, just wanted to get that. Set the E value to be a 0 0.36. So it'll be somewhere here okay somewhere here then the corresponding y t 
1.2, you can take either 1.31 or 1.15 as your starting point. Okay, so that's another way of doing this. As how do you divide it? Okay, so set E equal to this. Okay, find Y2 approximately 1.15 or 1.3. Okay, so that could be again could be your Y2 starting value. Okay, so once we start this now, this is your first step. Let's say this is the step number one here. Okay. Just to calculate the FE. FE is F2 3FL plus Y2. F2 is 0.56. This is the one you started with. Okay. So you can calculate F E. So that's approximately two thousand and forty nine pound force. Okay. So that's number three. Okay. Is to calculate the C required based on this equivalent load F E. So C required, or you can call C T required or C required, doesn't matter. So that equal to what? Equal to F E times okay, uh, times the L desired over ten to the power six and one over A or one over three. Because we're doing four bearing, so one over three. So L desired is should be calculated based on the given RPM and desired life, which is in hours, right? Which in hours. Okay. So what, what should that be? So the F E is calculated already is this number, and L desire. So N is this much, this much hour here. Uh, RPM is a minute, so twenty thousand times one one five zero times 60, right? Times 60. Divided by 10 to the power 6, 1 over 3. Okay? So all the numbers... So this is your required one. Go to the catalog. Let's say from NS2, I will use the same catalog. Okay. Um, let's say I decided to use the 63 series. Okay. So if I look at my catalog here, the shaft minimum diameter is which is how much? 3.1 inch. Right? 3.1 inch. If I pick the 63 series, 3.1 inch. So the, the closest one will be 6316 out of here. Okay? 6316. So let's say this is my choice at this step here. 6316. Okay? 6316. 6316, you look at the catalog. What's the C10 value for 6316? Which is 27,600. Right? 27,600. Write it down there. So the C10 is 27,600 here. And this value is greater than the C10 required to calculate it. Okay, we calculate. So that's okay. However, okay, we you shouldn't stop at it here. Go. You shouldn't stop at it here. We because up to this step here, it's a value based on what? Based on the scheme Y2, right? Based on the scheme Y2. So now the band is selected. So we have to recalculate everything to see that if we have made the right assumption. Okay. 
this up with this track and step number five. Look at what we're fleeing out. Because in the cable, you need a clean knot body, the static one. Clean knot is 19,500 at here. Okay, so that's a C knot. Okay, so once you find a C knot, calculate this F A over C knot. Calculate F A over C knot. So it's 675 over 19,500. That we look at it based on this ratio of A over C naught. What's the E value? 0 0.036. 0 0.036. It's a value between this and this, right? Between this and this. The E. So the E should be between 0 0.23, a 0.22, and a 0.24. So why don't we just take 0.23? Right? So let's pick a good guess. Okay. So E is approximately 0.23. Okay, 0.23. So once you figure out E, let's look at the ratio F A over F R. Okay, look at ratio F A over V F R. So okay. for this case, we have V is 1, and that's approximately 0.36. Okay, 0.36. So this ratio, compared to the E that you calculated, or you found from the previous step, is greater than 0.23. So which means we actually started at least at the right column, right? Which means what? Which means we started over here, right? We assume this value is greater than E. So that that's good guess. Okay? That's good guess. Now basically there are situation maybe you get you start your guess is this value greater than E. But actually it's less than E. Basically F A. So the axial loading is not as significant as you think. Right? Yeah. Okay? So that's this the purpose of the steps. Okay, so once we figure this out now, we need to find the actual y2 value. Okay, the actual y2. So the actual y2 value is on the table again. So what do we have here? We have F A over C naught. We have F Y2. Okay. What is the value of F A over C naught? And this is the y2 that we're looking for, right? We're looking for. But if you're based on the table right here, there is no 0 0.036. So basically, we have to use the interpolation right here. 0 0.028, 0 0.04, or it's the corresponding y2 are uh, here, here. So we have to use a little interpolation. Okay, yeah. So interpolate to find the y2. And the y2 can be found approximately 1.924. Okay, so if you don't remember how do you interpolate, they're basically straight lines, right? Uh, just look at lecture formula. Okay, okay. so. In the end, let's calculate, so recalculate the F E. And we calculate the F E. So F E again, the same formula. Okay. 
at this time your your uh, y2 is the actual y2 based on a certain bearing right so now equal to 23 34 pound force then based on this fe you calculate the term required again okay the term required again so this one Okay, one over three, <coughs> everything the same thing. So plug this as you were here. So that gives you 25,985 pound force. So this is the updated state term required. Now, does this number bigger or smaller than the state term that we just picked? We picked 6316. The C team is 27,600. So this number, it's still less than the value we picked, right? So which means that's it, right? So the the bearing that you picked satisfies the requirement here. So 6316, it is. Okay. If this number calculated is actually greater than this one here. Then what do you do? So what do you do then? Yep, that's a pretty general statement though. So what bearing would you pick? You're gonna pick what? 617? Or, or else you can do 64. Right? No. So that's basically, because why? If you pick 6317, your Compromise is what? The diameter of the shaft is big enough, right? But if you pick 64, the next series, you keep the same diameter, but the width will be slightly bigger for the bearing. Okay? Width is slightly bigger. That really depends. The, the tricky thing is, that might affect your loading condition. Because when you do the calculation of the shaft, you 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 you, uh, you calculate based on certain length of the shaft. Is that right? So if the waist is bigger enough, then the, the, the concentric point at the bearing, basically, there's slightly length change when you draw this spinning moment diagram and the torque diagram here, right? So, technically speaking, you can probably have to go back to the first step there uh, just to recalculate, right? If this little change will affect uh, some of the critical calculations or not. Is that good? Yeah. So, there's always uh, a, a compromise at here, and there's always iterations, and uh, basically at the design though. Okay. So this is the case, or this is the case when uh, when we where was the starting point? This, yeah, this is the starting point when we calculate the equivalent load based on a certain assumed yi value. As I said, you can your starting point is also to take the bearing, right? It's also to take the bearing. But this is this uh, this point here is a little bit uh, uh, tricky because when you pick a bearing, you basically you pick just to pick a bearing to satisfy the soft diameter requirement. That makes sense, right? So let's say the south diameter here is 3.1 inch. Then if I use this catalog here, I don't have to say pick 63. I can pick 62. I can pick 60 series here. So let's assume you're you're not lucky enough. You didn't pick 63, 16. So your starting point is, hey, look, this guy's cheap. So let's pick 60, 16. So you pick. 60-16 here, right? 60-16. But 60-16 has a comparable lower number for the C10 to the 16, the 63-16. So what would you expect? So basically, you will have iteration. The first iteration, the 60-16, won't work basically, right? And you go back one step, 62, 16. That work. 63, 16. It worked. Right, two steps. Okay. So the 
latest assignment has an Excel to uh, help you with this process that I hear. Doesn't open here. Okay, so I want you to get familiar with the, how to use the Excel here. There's a template, there's a couple of cells uh, was cut it out, and then you can just fill out the form, the form here. So basically, it's iteration here, number one, two, three, okay? And you look at the, uh, in the end, which one satisfy the requirement, basically, okay? Yeah, but the formula, or the way of calculation here, is basically what I just gone through, okay? Yeah, so uh, you can make use of this, uh, for your design selection in your design project, right? Yeah, so those are basically uh, some of the templates are, should come into handy uh, based on either from assignments or from lectures, right? Yeah. So take a look at the, how you make use of this one here. There's also interpolation formulas given in here, right? Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, you can also use this for the uh, radio load because uh, the formula for combined loading in here is this guy here, right? And the radio load basically you don't have this one here. You just have the first basically this term. And actually, when you look at the first term, you look at the table here. When it's the radio load, the x one is always one. So the same formula is the radio load is much easier because it is basically radio load is a lot of you need to go over many you have you can calculate the F you can calculate your F E there's a formula. You can calculate your F E just based on the V times F R. Right? No but it's combined the so F1 too is just a note on the unit, right? That's why a few steps maybe So if it's a bird here, which can basically uh I should be much simpler in terms of the bearing selection process. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So take a look at the lecture notes, and also there's an additional one document, uh, which I call it uh, comparisons on the bearing selection approach. Okay, so there are two documents. If you like, you can take a look at them that. I'll upload that on the blackboard. All right. So the last point I want to talk about is. Variable loading. So what it means by variable loading is this. In the previous question, a previous example, what you notice is here's the bearing, here's the loading. That's it. You subject the load the bearing to the load until the bearing fails. Right? Until the bearing fails. How many revolutions until it fails? That's what we, we can calculate, right? Yeah. However, the other situation is uh, maybe we're going to subject the bearing to a load, let's say we call it FE1, okay? How much? Subject to L1 number cycles. Then we're going to subject that bearing, the, the same bearing okay, to another load, FE2, where L2, L2, L1, L2 number of cycles. Okay? L2 number of cycles. Then, again, subject to FP2 and 3 number cycles. Okay, right? And then, you repeat the pattern. You can repeat the pattern here. So, uh, repeat the pattern. Again, same, same way, there's a clay, right? As the three different kind of loading out here. Okay? Yeah. So, until when? Until somewhere, at, this is a total, basically, at the failure. Right, on the feeder. Okay? Yeah. 
So the kind of question I'm going to hear is, and uh, would ask is, so how many number of repeats of this pattern here until the building fails? Right. Yeah, that is a logistic uh, question. Yeah. But in previous question is, we subject to one loading. And look at how many number of cycles you feel. Right. Uh, basically what the formula deal with. Okay. So let's take a look at this situation here. How do we deal with this? Right. How do we deal with this? So what we want to do is, okay. Uh, let's say I have three different, use this case here. So what you want to do is, you want to find, uh, you want to find an, an equivalent. So this here is FE1, FE2, FE3. We want to find the FE2, FE2 out of here. Okay. So that this FE2 will do the same damage as the FE1, FE2, FE3, subject to L1, L2, L3 number of cycles for each. Right. So that's one of the approach that we're going to use at it here. Okay. Yeah. Now remember the formula uh, when we derive the formula for bearing load and align. Load and line for the middle. What formula says this? And the weather constant is, for example, C10, L10, 1 over A, right? That's a constant. So you can see that the different S, E, and the L, 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 and so, 3 ten, L10 ten to the power 1 over A, that basically calls a failure, okay? That's a damage K. It's a full damage, okay? Yeah. Then, similarly, if I come back to this graph right here, right now you're subject to bearing to F1 under L1 number of the revolution, right? So when this is a case that is here, the bearing is not fading yet, right? It's not fading. It's still okay, right? It's still okay. However, it should cause certain kind of damage, right? It should cause certain kind of damage. So let's have uh, this F1 to the That's kind of a damage. Does that make sense? Right? That's kind of damage. But this damage is not the key yet. Right? It's not a full damage yet. It's part, partial damage, though. Right? Partial damage. Alright? So, similarly, there is this FE2 to the power of A and L2. And there is this FE3 to the power of A and L2. For each one of them, will cause a certain amount of damage. Then, I will add the three out of here. Okay. I will add the three, okay. and basically that that'll give me okay, a certain kind of a damage D, okay. a certain kind of damage D. And it's still not fading yet, right? Still not fading. So basically, there's still a number of life remains there, right? Okay. So what we want to what we want, what we want to find out is we want to find an F E Q. So this, so that this FE2 will cause the same kind of a damage as the combined three out of here. That make sense? Yeah. Okay. So L out of here is L1 plus L2 plus L3. So you're subject to L1, L2, L3. So that's the duration, right? Duration number cycle. And of course, under the duration number cycle is FE1, FE2, FE3. So, what will be the equivalent load when you subject the burn with the FE2 for L number cycles? Cause the same down the damage as a separated one. So then, you equate this with that. You put this with that. So, for FE2. So 
So after you two, it'll see you. That is a plan equal to what? This whole chunk that is here divided by L. Right? Divided by L. And then to the power of a. F E T A F E three A over L one over A. So that's your F E Q. Okay, that's your F E Q. What do we find F E Q now? Then we can say, okay, so how many number of cycles? If you subject if you subject the bearing to the F E Q only until it fails. And how many number cycles will it fail? If L equal to C ten over F E Q Okay, right. So L is number of cycles. Okay, till failure. Okay. When subjected to F E Q only. Okay, F E Q only. So that's the L. So L is number of cycles until it fails. Then if the question is how many repeats the L one, L two, L three pattern will the bearing okay until the bearing fails? So what do we do? The capital R over over this. Okay, divided by this. So this gives us number of repeats. Okay, the number of repeats. That's it? Yeah. So, um, there's a slightly different variation at a here is this. So how much power, how many how much basically how much light is left? Okay. If the next level okay, of a stress is held until B. So here's an example of you. Let's say, for example, a subject of the subject of the one. Okay, of the one and a Then the question is the next one is subject to L2. L2 equals to how much until failure? This is one of the final questions uh, that I'll give you uh, in the uh, latest one here. Okay? So, when you look at this one here, basically, here's what you can do now. Here's what you do, okay? Uh, remember, I'll, I'll still use I'll still use the previous previous uh, previous example here. Okay, so L1, L2, L3. Okay, still use that one as the example here. Okay. So let's say okay, so let's say let's say um, let's say you have the the so we have this is a standard from subject to L1, L2, L3. Okay, L1, L2, L3. Now let's do this. If I divide the buffer of K, I divide both sides by total damage K out of here. Okay, total damage K. Now this is probably as far as a mathematical could go, you know, basically. Okay, not that much. So what's the K then? So the K okay, is the total damage. Okay, it's the total damage. Basically, that's uh, for each one of the fours until three. So, for example, the K is equal to F E one to the power of L one. So. If you subject to F E two, it'll be capital L two. If you subject to F E three, it'll be capital L three. Okay, capital L three. 
Okay, then, what we can do is, let's plot this one over here. Plot this one over here, because they're all clear. Okay, plot this one over here. Okay, plot this one over here. So then, what do we get? We get capital D over K equal, so when you plot this one here, it's not the A, B1, A plus of this one. L1 over capital L2. L3 over capital L3. Right? Capital L3. Now, <coughs> capital K is the total damage. Capital D is what? It's a partial damage. So D is a partial damage. Then, the situation is, I subject to L1 and L2, but how many number of life remains if you subject to L3 E3? So you calculate the number remains as L3. So which means, actually, the capital D in that case, if we set capital D to the turn of capital K, then we are, that's the situation of what we want. Right? If I set this to D, then the one equal to this. Okay, so small L3, small L3. So small L3 would be how much? Small L3 would be one minus L1 over L1, L2 over L2. Then divide everything by uh, not divide, multiply by L3. Right. So this is the number of remains. Right. Number of remaining right. Then subject to the F E three until it fills. Okay. So formula wise, okay, just remember okay. Actually if you have you have a general case L three L L four or five, just keep adding it here, right? Just keep adding. Okay. This is the one here and the other one and this one and here. Okay, that might be useful. Okay. So so you have a little bit, a few more minutes here, so let's take a look at the refining question in a few, okay? <coughs> uh, the refining question is saying is, we have a 0, 2, 30, series angular value. Okay, so we this one is the So look at the two look at the two on the top find the corresponding basically information for the zero to thirty as it will be So thirty is equal to thirty a millimeter of the ball size. And yeah, we have F by one. Let's just call it one. So we do it. F one is So this is just first you subject the bearing to this not for for that many of cycle. Then F3 to subject the bearing to F2 until it fills. Then let's find out what's the number of cycle L2 at here until it fills. Right? Yeah. So, uh, basically L1 plus L2 should be to the power of 6. Oh, sorry. Actually, no. No, that would be too simple, right? <laughs> no, that would be too simple. So, then, let's do a point to your mind. If F E, if you subject the bearing with F1, then the question is, how many number of the tripods will it fill? So we call that capital L1. And that should equal to 3 times L10 to the power of 8, right? 
certain LPNs are based in varying the use logic. This is zero to thirty. So from the from the to in the top step, we can find that the C term is twenty point three kilo newton. And L terms just ten to the power of uh, six, right? To the power of six. Okay? So then calculate this is this one here, we can calculate L one. So we can test L one. So L one is going to So that being less than 13 is 1.434, 10 to the power of 6, number of cycles or revolutions. Okay? Yeah. So this is the bearing will feel if subject F1 numbers. So similarly, find the L2 will feel if subject F1 numbers. Okay? And that's approximately 0 0.01, 0 0.31, 10 to the power of 6 revolution. Okay. So that makes sense because F2 is greater than C10, so it's less than uh, 1 meter, right? And F1 is less than C10, so L1 is greater than 1 meter, number of revolution. Okay, so once you find L1, L2, from our derivation, it's more L1 over capital L1 plus more L2 over capital L2, which is equal to 1, right? Which is equal to 1. Okay, yeah. Why is the L2 in the end? Why is it L2? Okay. L2 is just a simple calculation. Okay, right, that's this. So, I'll keep a question for you guys. FEQ. Right, it's the same question you know. How do you calculate FEQ for this situation here? So, what's FEQ basically mean? Uh, FE1 for L1. Then subject to F E two, F E two is actually higher than F E one. So subject to F E two for how much? For this L two, right? Until this fails. And then this is F E two. So what will be the F E two? Okay. So we have this situation right here. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Good. All right, thank you.